Welcome to Into Theology. We are doing a little bit, uh, something a little bit different. We're going to take a just a week break here from Augustine because we've been, well, Ian's been busy. I've been easily hey, available. Don't blame um, me. Blame but, Baylor. Uh, Baylor University because you give a lecture there. Maybe we can talk about that in a minute. But uh, uh, one of, uh, a book came out recently called Canadian Baptist Fundamentalism between 1878 and 1978, published by McMaster Divinity College uh, in their series there. You had a chapter in it, and the chapter is titled Wider Than This One Church, The Fellowship of Evangelical Baptist Churches in Canada, which are essentially a group that, um, if you're in Ontario, are, are relatively big, but like if you live in Manitoba or Alberta, it might be a smaller group, but they're significant, at least in Canada's history. So... I wanted to ask you about Canadian Baptist fundamentalism and about your chapter and about this book. So why don't you give us the five minute spiel about what's a fundamentalist in, in Canada? Sure. Uh, well, thanks. I mean, uh, it was a it was a fun chapter to write. Um, I was asked by the two editors, Paul Wilson, who used to teach at Heritage and uh, Taylor Murray, um, who's doing a Ph.D. I think he's doing his Ph.D. on like um, I, I could be totally botching this. So Taylor, if you're listening, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure it's like something to do with the Maritime Baptist. Um, and so uh, I've been part of the Canadian Baptist Historical Society uh, for a number of years, which this book, as you said, comes out, uh, came out with that series. Um, it's actually published with Pickwick, which is like an imprint mm -hmm. of, of Whiff and Stock. And so yeah. I've contributed to other, other chapters in books in their series. This was one me and Dr. Haken we did. Uh, I was edited by Gord Heath. This was on Canadian churches and the First World War. So Dr. Haken and I, years ago, it was in 2014, the 100-year uh, anniversary of the start of the First World War, where we looked at Canadian Baptist <laughs> responses to the war. And then this one uh, on Canadian Baptist fundamentalism is another book in the series. Just sort of like looking at, um, you know, that whole development that starts really in the late 19th century and then goes all the way through. I mean, really, like the fundamentalists within the fellow within the within the Canadian Baptist world kind of finally died out really in 2003. Um, and uh, and then Jarvis Street Baptist well, Church. So when you say 2003, quick note, is there a, an event or is that just a general date? Yeah. So what happens? So what I do in the and I don't actually get into this bit in the chapter, but um, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at from 1953 and the like the founding of the Fellowship Baptist, which is what I'm ordained. I'm an ordained Fellowship Baptist minister. The fellowship I, is I, like the union of two prior groups, right? Yeah. So you have like, uh, you know, in you get the main kind of mainline Baptist denomination, which is now called the CBOQ or Canadian Baptist of Ontario and Quebec. They go all the way back. And uh, and so in the early 20th century, as part of the broader fundamentalist modernist controversies that happened, you know, you've got like Jay Gresham, Machen and all that in the States. Uh, and and then in Canada it hit and the main figure was a guy named T.T. T. Shields, uh, who was the founder of the seminary I went to, Toronto Baptist Seminary. Uh, so he was he was on uh, he was he was involved with McMaster University, which was the training seminary school for Baptists in Canada. Um, which used to actually, it's now in Hamilton. It used to be right behind Wycliffe College, uh, which is now it's at the Royal Conservatory of Music, mm. uh, which is where your sister studied. Um, so it's weird. I, I remember we'd be, we would go and hear Crystal, you know, sing at the conservatory and we'd walk around like, wow, this used to be McMaster. This is, and it used to train Baptist pastors. It was so weird. Mm. Um, and so T.T. Uh, T. Shields was part of uh, McMaster. He was, you know, pastor of Jarvis Street Baptist Church, which was the Baptist church of the day. Uh, very powerful, very wealthy church. Uh, he was himself known as the Spurgeon of Canada. He'd come from England uh, and became a very powerful leader and preacher. Uh, there was the uh, modernism or liberalism starts to creep in with a guy named L.H. Marshall at McMaster. So it sparks this huge controversy. And when you uh, say so liberalism, um, you mean that they voted for Justin Trudeau? It was it. Yep. Okay. Just, just no. define liberalism really quick. The, the, theological liberalism. Yeah. yeah. So in Canada, just, you're right. That That's a bit of a difficult, difficult term because there's the Liberal Party of Canada um and um and tt shields himself would get into like scraps with politicians like he would like want to debate he would want to debate prime ministers on the floor of parliament and stuff like that like he he actually wanted to do it i think at like the at the at the, the maple leaf gardens if i recall but um he yeah so liberalism for th this particular brand of liberalism in here in, at mcmaster was lh marshall he was like kind of like you know, things on the resurrection and the incarnation and stuff like that. He was waffly on uh, theories of evolution, uh, that kind of stuff. And so it caused this huge controversy in the tw in the late teens, early 20s uh, of the 20th century, such that there was a big split uh, at McMaster. Uh, T.T. Shields pulled out and then formed Toronto Baptist Seminary in 1923. 
And then they formed, they pulled out of the Convention Baptists and formed the Union of Regular Baptist Churches of Canada. So that the, they were just called the Union Churches. Um, and so as often kind of happens, um, you get like fundamentalism when it first started was really important because they were like holding the line for orthodoxy, the fundamentalists in North America. And then what happens, of course, is once those debates kind of peter out, then the fundamentalists all kind of turned inward and started to battle each other. And so that's what happened. So you get like you have the union, uh, you have Toronto Baptist Seminary. T.T. Shields is the guy that's kind of running, you know, kind of the dominant figure, the leader for all of that. And then he gets into some serious controversy within Toronto Baptist Seminary with a guy named W. Gordon Brown, who was one of the key figures in the earlier fundamentalist controversy. Now he's under threat uh, because he wasn't really kind of towing the line that T.T. Shields wanted him to. And so uh, in the in the late 40s and then early 50s, uh, there was a split between Brown and T.T. Shields. Uh, and that that then formed uh, eventually will form the Fellowship Baptists out of the union. And then uh, it'll eventually form what is now Heritage College and Seminary. It used to be called Central Baptist Seminary. So Brown split from Shields, formed Central. And then after time, Central eventually merges with a school in London. Uh, and they go out to Cambridge, Ontario to form Heritage. And so Heritage, you teach there. And, and uh, Don I Carson there. went to Central, right? Which Don one? Carson went to Central. So Don Carson actually dedicated his book, Exegetical Fallacies, to Gordon Brown. Um, which is really interesting. Uh, and so the fellowship, then Fellowship Baptists were formed out of the union. Um, there was so a group splits from the union under, um, uh, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank on his name. This is going to try, hold on. Uh, uh, oh, Hal McBain. So Hal McBain is is one of the guys in the union that that leads the split. Uh, there have been a group of, of other independent Baptist churches, the Fellowship of Independent Baptists. So they merged with the Splinter Group from the Union. And then in 1953, formed FEB, the Fellowship of Evangelical Baptists. Um, my, the guy that I wrote my... 53? 53, it starts. And so uh, and so the Fellowship's still going strong. Um, so the 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 title, uh, wider than this one, Church, is the, of the title of my chapter is actually a quote from Hal McBain. Um, where he saw that like Shields was becoming much more narrow and really like the only kind of people that were truly orthodox uh, were the people in the union that mm. all kind of cowed to him. And yeah. so he said, no, the church is much bigger than this. Um, we need a we need a pan evangelical identity that goes right across Canada. Um, this is kind of the same time of the rise of like, you know, Billy Graham, National Association of Evangelicals, that kind of stuff going on in the States. And so that kind of brand of, you know, neo-evangelicalism like Carl Henry, uh, Harold J. Ockengay, um, that really has an influence, too, on guys like McBain, um, who want to maintain their Baptist identity, but also see themselves as part of this bigger church. Uh, it's kind of like a Catholicity, you could say. And so that that was what really I was asked to do this uh, chapter by by Taylor and by Paul, because I'd written my Ph.D. on Dallimore. And so Arnold Dallimore was also very early on. Uh, and we should also do a quick note, like another episode on that. Uh, on yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd like be we cool. should just spend like 10 minutes or whatever on it. Like yeah. not today, but just as a, because I think it'd be it's really, well, just a quick note. El, uh, Delamore is interesting to me in part because he is, I think, a high level historian without a PhD, yeah. but someone who just acquired the skills needed by careful reflection and study. And I, I just, it's just interesting that that might be the future in Canada where uh, credentialed education may be less available than it used to be, not gone, less yeah. available. And the onus on us will be to do the same quality of work that typically you gain from a PhD apart from the, the traditional systems. Sure. Which is, oh, yeah. He might be a model for that because we need models because I think it's not the credential, it's the skill yeah. that we need. And no, I agree. Yeah, I think it's going to happen in the States, too. I think that once governments really start to crack down on schools, like, I mean, I teach here in Colorado at CCU and man, like our lifestyle statements, our statements of faith, all that kind of stuff, they're going to come under serious attack. And like, it's just a matter of time, I think. And I think it's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be very hard to get a PhD. I think you need the training uh, still, the credentials, who cares in one sense, right? But you need to know what you're doing. Dalimore is self-taught. Like he just spent 30 years writing a biography, two volume biography of Whitfield. And he just, he kind of, he admits, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing. And he just kind of was like learning as he was going along and then, you know, publishes this amazing, you know, two volume book. 
Um, so he was one of the, he wasn't, he wasn't exactly a founder of the fellowship, but he was a very, very, he was very close. Was he, was he a fellowship Baptist? Yep. He was in the oh. fellowship. So he, he planted Cotton Baptist church just outside of Windsor, Ontario. Mm. Um, and so he, uh, and he was best friends with Hal McBain. So he was supportive of McBain throughout the whole thing. And then was a very, he had been in the union. He himself, Dalimore wrote a, a biography of Shields, of T.T. Shields. that was never been published. I have a copy of it. And it's damning. Like he, he did, he was like, he you was know, pretty, he, uh, he respected that's... Shields and what Shields could do, but he was also pretty scathing with how Shields handled things. So I just want to make a note that sometimes when I hear about like say Canadian history, you, you feel very patriotic. Hearing yeah. about Baptist history kind of makes you feel like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> bad Baptist. But there's something too, I think history that record, like, you know, you Augustine's talk about memory, but the idea of this recalling sort of your past your genealogy yeah. or your broader family a sense of solidarity and confidence that you gain and you don't have that when you're just a disconnected internet person uh, yeah. apart from any kind of piece of history i mean that's partly why i think studying medieval and patristics are useful too sure. uh, the, the church fathers because they give you a grounding that you just feel like deeper they're they're part of the communion of saints they're in heaven right now worshiping god with you as the same body of christ because um, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're, you know, you think of like, okay, so fellowship Baptists trace their origins back to, you know, these earlier Canadian Baptists who trace their origin back to the British Baptists who trace their origin back yeah, to the it. Puritans, the Puritans back to the English Reformation, the English Reformation connected to the broader European Reformation, the Reformation coming out of the medieval period, the medieval period coming out of the patristic period, which comes right out of the New Testament. Right. So you can see that there's, we're not landmark Baptists, of course, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you can see that like we're part of this bigger branch and that that's that's the key to Baptist Catholicity, I think, right there. One of the amazing parts of history is that Jesus promised to build his church. And after 100 till about 1517, there was no church until Martin Luther <laughs> came right. on the scene. <laughs> Except for like the Waldensians. And some well, there's a couple. There's a bit of a trail and, <laughs> and you can you can discover this trail by seeing who died. You might call yeah. it a trail of blood or something. Blood. Very small. Um <laughs> Okay, so I have one last question for you on this Baptist history. Sure. How did Canadian Baptists leave fundamentalism and become an enlightened, highly educated uh, bunch they are today? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I feel like you're being facetious there. <laughs> what? This is a very direct question. I mean, why would you think that? Um, like, why do we well, invest I mean, so there, much of our life in scholarship and Catholicity? Sure. Why no, are we so easy there's... to unite with one another? There's no division, that kind of stuff. <laughs> well... I mean, there's some there. There were some Baptists in Canada that had some really great, you know, quote PhDs. But um, you know, no, I mean, I think there are some really remarkable Baptists. I mean, there's um, you say D. A. D. A. Carson. D. A. Yeah. Carson comes straight out of the fellowship, right? Uh, Steve Wellam. Steve Wellam uh, at Southern. He he comes out of a group that the that come out had come out of the fellowship, but that's very much his world too. Mm -hmm. um, and. Peter Gentry teaches yep. still at, at Toronto Baptist Seminary. I mean, here, I, I just realized as I was like drinking my cup, it's <laughs> my my coffee is like my cup is a TBS cup because I'm an alumnus there. Well, so I look at me. Or is he Canadian Baptist or is he, uh, what is he? Who, Steve who, who's that? Steve Wellam? Uh, he was in the Sovereign Grace Fellowship. Like that. Or so Sorry. Came... I just, no, I was thinking of someone else. My brain, he teaches at TBS, but he comes from Atlanta, Canada to teach. Um, oh, I'll remember the name in a minute. Sorry, my brain just kind of broke for a second. But anyways, oh, okay. we, we keep going. Yeah. So, so when like when the fellowship formed, you know, initially it forms in 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 Ontario, and then they immediately start making links with other like-minded Baptist groups across the country, uh, and so then and then they form like a national denomination. So and then the fellowship is now it's broken up into regions, right? So the Ontario one's part of the Feb Central region. Uh, and then uh, so it's got, you know, it's got like that kind of breakdown. And then each of the regions are very different. Right. We kind of for, like we fellowship Baptists think that everybody's going to be exactly like Ontario, but they're not like even as you said, like there's not as many in certain provinces. You know, B.C. has got a, a very different history that will come out. Uh, uh, you training know, I, school there. I think it's Cary, if memory. If memory uh, no, Cary is a different one. Uh, no, it's uh, Northwestern is the uh, other fellowship school. Oh, Northwestern is a fellowship. OK. <clears throat> yeah. And then and then the Maritime Baptists are very different. Like I just I, I spoke at Baylor last week uh, for their Institute for Studies of Religion. And, and I was looking at how evangelicals have interpreted the Great Awakening. And uh, and I put a focus as well, not just on New England, but Nova Scotia, because there was a guy that came up named Henry Align from um, 
New Ink from from Rhode Island. He was a Rhode Island guy, kind of a mystic, sort of like a, a mystical version, kind of a slightly heretical version of George Whitfield, powerful preacher. Went up into the Maritimes uh, into Nova Scotia, which back then Nova Scotia actually included Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick as well. And so he goes up there and he's he's in uh, uh, preaching in and around that area and revival hits. This is a- just after Whitfield. So this is like kind of later 1700s. And that, but he's like super mystical. Like William James actually did a little bit of a study of Align in his uh, Varieties of Religious Experience book. And uh, because of Align's mysticism and he's like he denies original sin and stuff like that. And he's mm-hmm. super like pro free will as hard as you can be. Uh, he's, he's actually not a Baptist. He's, 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 he thinks baptism debates are stupid. And then for some weird reason, out of his revival preaching, you get the birth of Calvinistic Baptists in Nova Scotia, which is really weird. And so those Baptists there in the Maritimes now, well, then, it's not you know, weird because they just connection. follow what the Bible said. <laughs> sense, Calvinistic right? Baptists are thinking. So there's another guy. So there's two major historians really of all this. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Dalimore is one. Uh, and then the other major historian is a guy named George Rollick, who is like mm. kind of like the Mark Knoll, George Marsden of Canada. And he sadly died. He taught it. He taught at Queens and Kingston. He taught at Mount Allison. Uh, he sadly died in Ottawa in 1995 after a car crash. Uh, but Rollick is a fascinating historian in his own right. So um, I'm I'm very thankful to be part of the fellowship of, of Feb. Um, I, I like I like how it ha- I think they still do a good job of maintaining that wider than this one church identity. Yeah, no, um, so. so you can be you can be reformed and flourish in the fellowship, um, and 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 yet there can be other people that have differing views. But there's like a real cohesion. They can really and and I think they're having a really good impact for the gospel in Canada. And um, Heritage, in my mind, is the best seminary to go to in Canada. I wouldn't want to go anywhere. I wouldn't send if I was in Canada now. I would, I would and and I had people in my church wanted to go to seminary. That's where I'm sending for sure. Yeah, I I teach it Her- and, and not just Heritage right it. now. So uh, <laughs> that's why I, if it was a Christian university. I'd send them to Redeemer, and you also teach there. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So yeah. So this is gonna, this is kind of this is actually helpful for me because I I knew the history, but the dates and things kind of yeah. fall to pieces, but. There's some really cool chapters in here too. Like if you look at, um, I'm just trying to find. um, Just putting the cover uh, on here. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the cover of the book. Yeah, there you go. Um, What's his name? Uh, I'm trying to find, I've got my digital version here. I'll just put the uh, the table of contents. Um, So uh, I'm trying to find, because somebody, Doug Adams does a chapter on, um, on uh, great contention, Ontario Baptist and the fundamentalist modernist struggle for McMaster University. Yeah, 1919 to 1927. What chapter number is that? Four. Oh, the like, great contention. See, go. that's cool. Like to me, like this kind that's of chapter a really is really good chapter, man. Doug right. Adams, he did his PhD at Western it. on Shields, and it's like that is a phenomenal chapter. And then Jeff Straub has one too. Um, trying to find his oh, his right before mine. Uh, his looks at the kind of cross border relations in the 20th century between Baptists, he calls it imports and exports. And Jeff Straub is also a really good historian of, of, of fundamentalism. You know, what I just thought about this. I actually got this from the Heritage Library, hey, Heritage there you go, Belgian Seminary. So, um, this has been so I don't know about your timeline, but this is like a super helpful conversation for me. We sometimes make jokes, but I, like, I'm really happy that I am part of the Feb. It is a strong denomination in Canada, the Lord has greatly blessed it. The gospel is preached. I can't guarantee in every church whatsoever, but it's, it's expected to be preached given the associational standards. Yeah, yeah. You're discipled. There's churches planted. There's felt. There's genuine fellowship and friendship. Yeah, and it's a good place to be. And I think in yeah, Canada was... we have. It's just a struggle with our denominations, and I'm I'm glad for its existence. Yeah, I was at I was I pastor at West Toronto Baptist Church in the mm-hmm. Junction in Toronto. Justin Galati. Yeah, uh, and we were part of the Toronto Association. The Toronto Association is solid, man. Like, there's some really good people in the Toronto. Your church at West Highland mm-hmm. in Hamilton is a solid church. Houston, James I, North, I, yeah, or well, it's, it, Houston's now James North, but yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't realize. See, so me and Michael Haken, Doctor Haken, wrote the history of of Houston Street Baptist Church, mm-hmm. uh, which was really Stanley fun. Stanley Ave got converted to uh, yeah to baptism. <laughs> Oh really? That's well, crazy. not no, no, no. Like the building was bought out. Yeah. By a reform. They're they're they have the. It's a great group. Uh, Bill the Young oh. pastor. They're okay. having the gospel. It's not. It's not oh, a bad. That's thing. them. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, they're Stanley Abbott. Oh. I, I, unless I'm in, no, I'm nearly certain because Stanley Abbott. You're, you're, I'm sure you're right. Is that where Doctor Haken was converted? Stanley Ave? Yep. yep. Yeah. Then it's the same church. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um. And uh. You know, in this case, it's it's another gospel preaching church. It's maybe unfortunate that a a Baptist church lost um, the building, but at the same time. 
a lot of churches are selling their building to whatever commercial real estate. And yeah. if you're a church and you can sell your building to another Christian group, like you got to just do it. I mean, if they're Presbyterian, but have the gospel, sure. just do it because it's better than having Walmart there. Well, you think of like, um, what was the Alliance church that uh, Tozer was at in Toronto? It was right on Avenue road, uh, right North of, uh, right North of like, um, the, the, the ROM and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Royal Ontario museum. Right there. Well, he, oh, wow. Yeah. So Tozer was there and, uh, they put that church up for sale to go move out to people's church. Uh, where it is now i think it's people church people's wait, did, church wait wait did he pastor people's church yeah there was tozer i didn't there. know that yeah i'm I, now now you got me freaking no, out I, i'm just, just i don't it. know like i i'm like i have a weird for whatever reason the history that i know pretty well kind of ends around 1700 yeah, yeah it's called avenue. <laughs> what is it it's called it was called avenue road church okay and uh and hmm. so yeah he pastored there uh i don't see the dates on it but um so he pastored it at avenue road so then they sold they sold the building and the real estate developer had said that they would sell it to another Christian group and then backed out of it. And now it's like a Buddhist temple. See, that's it. That's it. And, and also zoning laws. Like if you sell a religious building in Toronto, I doubt it ever could be a, like you can't build another church in a similar location. Probably. Well, I guess I don't know that for sure, but I think that's true. In terms I mean, of zoning laws, like... the city of churches, it was a city of spires. Right. And now so <laughs> many of those beautiful old church buildings are condos, you know. Yeah. Now near the Ron, there is an Anglican church. It's really beautiful still. What's it called? Again? Yeah, yeah. That's as liberal as the day is long. Oh, is it? But oh, the yeah. actual building, like, yeah, okay. The view building's stunning. I can't remember the name of it. That's a, Trinity, yeah, that's maybe? Awesome. No, but it's, it's kitty corner to the ROM, right? And yeah. uh, it's that that was a class, that was a key uh church in Toronto for for Angli the Anglican Church of Canada. Mm. But it's very liberal. Yeah. There's there's a couple of good ones though in that area. So I've just realized like, this it's just just as like at a personal level, this has been a really fun conversation because it exposed like, I don't, while I have like this vague idea of stuff, it really helped me. One day we should have um, Dr. Haken on and, oh, and just yes. like talk through, like we could do it maybe in more than one episode, but like, what is a Baptist? And then go to the 1600s and like, because you know, there's the debates are Baptists more like from the Anabaptists or, the, you know, whatever, which I don't think there's a good i mean the trail of blood leads right to us therefore but um i don't think that's a great argument in, in my basic understanding of history but i just think it'd be utterly fascinating most of us as baptists for whatever reason and there might be institutional reasons why like we don't hear too much about our past or if we do it's our it's a local expression of our past it's merely the place we've been in for 30 or 40 years like my church uh actually dr haken's done the uh, history of it yeah, We're doing, yeah, I think it's it like fifty John year, Thailand, right? Yeah, West Highland. Uh, I can't wait to get a, get a, get a copy of that. It's going to be really cool, but at the same time, like we think of ourselves, I think primarily as okay, we've been here for fifty years, and, we, and not that everyone does, but it's easy to forget. Well, no, we're part of this huge association that goes back to what you mentioned, nineteen fifty three, the foundation, the formation of the Fab, out of these fundamentalist modernist controversy. Then again, like it goes back all the way to. Uh, all the way to Paul when he was a believer's Baptist. Um, no, John the Baptist. Dude. John the Baptist. Baptist. Sorry, John the Baptist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The greatest. No, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know what would be cool is, uh, so um, in the in the U.S. here, there's a, a publisher called Particular Baptist Press, and they did this big series. It's a 12-part series called A Noble Company. Yeah. And yeah. the 12th volume, Haken edited, and it's called The Canadians. And it's got chapters. I did a chapter on Dalamore in it. Uh, and it's got chapters of all the kind of key, key Canadian uh, kind of Calvinistic Baptists in Canada might be worth actually like doing an episode on on just that volume it'd be kind of fun and yeah. then he could we could trace back you know where the baptists come from how they come to canada um and then uh and then look at some of that stuff too i think we should stop here and, and uh, we'll do a couple uh book things after this thanks ian